welcome, welcome, welcome. I am uh, about half hour later than I wanted to be today, but that is quite all right. That's just how it is and how it ends up being. Okay, so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Ron, <laughs> Ronathan. I'm Ronathan PXPX. This is Ronathan Plays and Probes, and I like to do fantasy football. Why do I like to do fantasy football? It's just something uh, I've played football for several years. Just the whole stats and intrigue is all um, stats of the sport has always just intrigued me. So it's just really um, quite interesting to see just the journey that I've taken since playing uh, fantasy football since '03. So uh, I just hope that you can enjoy uh, the ride that I got here for all of you. Uh, let's have a good time, and we're going to get into some uh, who do I start challenges. So, hey, this is only my second week doing this. Normally, I um, play uh, board games, Dice Masters, uh, Star Wars Destiny, Keyforge. Um, so, yeah, so that's what I like to do. Oh, hey, welcome, uh, <laughs> Ingledoom. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, really appreciate it. Any questions that you guys have about fantasy football, it doesn't matter what they are, whether you have some uh, questions about like how to play, how to get started, or what is this all about, feel free to type them in the chat. Uh, I will do my best to be interactive while I share with you what's going on. So thanks once again, Ingledoom, for popping by and saying hi. If you don't know, uh, <laughs> I got to get this all set up, but uh, Ingledoom is part of the CR game room, so I usually play Among Us with them on Friday nights, and they always set up our Dice Masters tournaments. So if you can, give them a follow at uh, CR Game Room TV. You can even click on uh, CRGR Ingledoom. He plays retro arcade games. He is awesome. He's going to be doing that tomorrow night. So give a look out for my man Ingledoom. Alrighty, so let's get started. Let's go on to the accuracy challenge. Alrighty, so each week uh, Reddit has this thing called uh, the accuracy challenge uh, put on by their NAR uh, FFL league. And basically they give you 15 people as to who do you start in these situations. You basically get, uh, you have your scoring rules over here on the right. I went into them last week, but basically you're gonna get points for uh, however many yards that they get, if they score touchdowns, and if they have any turnovers or interceptions, uh, fumbles, you're gonna lose points. So basically this is just kind of, uh, it's a pretty good practice for myself. Some of these players I don't have on my team, so it just, uh, forces me to think about other players in the league which hopefully enhances my uh, decisions as to who do you play because when you end up looking on your bench at teams you got to figure out oh who am I gonna start in this situation so they do a pretty good job at uh, having you figure out like oh who are you gonna start in these situations but in this case I mean Ravens versus Jaguars we got Lamar Jackson and we got Patrick Mahomes right you would think Patrick Mahomes would be the no-brainer, but the New Orleans Saints actually has a pretty legitimate defense. Um, however, though, lately it's been a heavy dose of J.K. Dobbins and uh, Gus Edwards running the ball. And so Lamar Jackson, I know he finally found, uh, found <laughs> was able to find Hollywood Brown in the end zone for a touchdown last week. But we're still going to stick with uh, Patrick Mahomes on this one, even though Lamar Jackson could run all over them for about 100 yards himself and help boost that category. Uh, we're still sticking with Mahomes. Uh, he's just a beast out there. Alrighty. Um, and just to note uh, right here that there are, when you score your uh, touchdowns uh, as a passing QB, you only get four points for a passing TD in uh, how they're doing it versus six points for running. So Lamar Jackson could very well have a couple rushing DZ, TDs. However, though, I think they're just going to uh, preserve him for the playoffs and they're going to just do rely a little bit more on the rookie uh, J.K. Dobbins. All right, so who do we got next? We got Ben Roethlisberger at Cincinnati. I mean, Cincinnati, I mean, they are just toast and they are done. I mean, if you're looking for the second worst team in the NFL behind the New York Jets, it's definitely the Bengals since they're all banged up. No starting running back. Um, and then you got Philip Rivers, or as we affectionately like to call him, Philip Givers, when he was playing uh, with the Chargers. I mean, I have a love hate for the guy. So, I mean, he's just a mad trash talker, which is kind of funny for a quarterback. But, uh, dude's a gamer. 
So, uh, who's going to end up uh, doing this? Oh, we're going to go with Ben. I mean, finally, he's got to be able to use those targets in Chase Claypool, Claypool, Deontay Johnson. Oh, by the way, Juju Smith-Schuster. All righty, quarterback. We got Baker Mayfield, and we got Matt Ryan. Uh, who's going to end up taking it right there? Well, uh, Tampa Bay defense is pretty solid. However, though, they have been suspect as of late. And we got Baker Mayfield versus the Giants. We are definitely, since this is going to be a shootout, oh, there also is no Julio Jones today. So keep that in mind. So it's going to be a lot of Calvin Ridley, and it's going to be, uh, what should we call Russell Gage. So Jarvis Landry up here with Baker Mayfield and the tight end. That is going to be a little bit of a tougher situation. You know, do they rely heavily on Chubb and Kareem Hunt, in which Kareem Hunt's great in the passing game? Oof. Still got to go with uh, Matt Ryan. I still think that Matt Ryan outscores Baker Mayfield just because of the fact that they're going to be relying so much on, much on Chubb and Hunt. Alrighty, who do we got? We got Chris Carson... Seahawks versus Washington and Cam Akers, Rams versus the Jets. And automatically just thinking Cam Akers just because he did a monstrous job last week uh, with this rookie. I mean, they finally gave him 20 plus carries. And guess what? He ended up uh, with 100 buck 70 yards against the Patriots, who, I mean, their D is not as great as it was last year. But still, I mean, Bill Belichick still surprises for teams. Alrighty, who we got next? Hey, just who I'm hyping up, J.K. Dobbins uh, versus Jacksonville and Kenyon Drake versus Philly. Now, Kyler Murray has been running less uh, for the Cardinals, so this is quite interesting. So we're seeing a little bit more. I mean, I, I started Kyler Murray last week. I'm forcing myself to start Kyler Murray. Again, you'll see uh, what's happening. Uh, but... Um, Realistically, what's going on with this is that uh, I'm kind of split between this with uh, J.K. Dobbins and uh, Kenyon Drake. But my gut is leaning towards J.K. Dobbins just because uh, they're finally figuring out that, hey, we need to face Mark Ingram. By the way, I drafted Mark Ingram in the third round in two leagues. One of those leagues, I am out of the playoffs. The other league, I am just hanging in there. I'm at second place, so this is semifinal. So I got lucky with a bad draft. I was all about not taking Baltimore's backfield, and I went in on a couple of leagues and took Baltimore's backfield with Mark Ingram, thinking that uh, he'll bounce back and have it. And just nope, it's just been a trifecta of hell just to kind of try and deal with. So we're going with that. Alrighty, we got next. We got Ezekiel Elliott and we got Wayne Gallman. Never would I thought would I'd sit there and have a decision where I'd have to pick. Zeke versus a backup versus Saquon's backup running back, right? In this instance, but he has fallen off mightily. He's going against San Francisco's D, which is tough. The Cowboys are putrid. However, though, they do have silver linings in the future with CeeDee Lamb. They still have uh, Mari Cooper. I mean, this is just a battle of futility as far as like picking Zeke every week. I mean, we don't know if it's just something he's just had a huge drop off. Mind you, running backs have the shortest career out of all players in the NFL. Are we starting to see the decline or is this bad coaching? We don't know, but we are actually going to go with Wayne Gallman in this one. I mean, this is just the most interesting one that I could see out there is actually just that. So, Pardon me, there's a little notification that I just wanted to attend to. Man, when is this not going to happen? Alrighty, so we got Brandon Ayuk uh, against Dallas, so, and Terry McLaurin. So, uh, Alex Smith is currently out, and we currently know that, hey, no matter what, he is going to lead the team in targets. So, I mean, we still just got to trust in uh, Terry. <laughs> Always I end up seeing this one. Hey, which Rams receiver do you have to pick? Is it going to be Woods or is it going to be Cup going to go off? It's it's always Woods. Woods is always the more solid and reliable choice. I mean, Cup is going to be that 10 yards. He's going to, you know, Goff is going to find him. But, you know, right now it looks like Robert Woods is just getting just slightly more open and open over um, uh, Mr. Cup right there. All righty. So moving on next, we got Corey Davis who just – Flat out just had a fumble like 40 yards last week 
So basically put up a donut and Amari Cooper versus San Francisco. Right? Do we trust Andy Dalton or do we think that this is a bounce back game? Uh, it's going to be Corey Davis, I think. I think Corey Davis has the bounce back game for him, for himself. Alrighty. We got Ebron, Steelers versus Cincinnati. And we got Gronk, uh, Buccaneers at Atlanta. Um, Ebron, I'm going to go with Ebron. I think Gronk had his TD last week. I don't think he gets it again this week just because of the fact that it could possibly be a little bit of a shootout. So we're going to probably see a little bit more of a heavy dose of Mike, uh, whatchamacallit, Mike Davis. Uh, so we'll end up seeing that one. Uh, is it Mike well, no, Mike Davis is with uh, Mike Evans. Excuse me. Ooh, crap, I'm using my mics up. All right. Alvin Kamara, Saints versus KC. And DK Metcalf, Seahawks at Washington. Alvin Kamara is now going to see a rise again because guess what? Drew uh, Taysom Hill is gone and Drew Brees is back in the starting lineup. So we're going to see a little bit more of uh, less running from Drew Brees, obviously. So that's going to help out Kamara in his run game. And you get DK Metcalf versus Washington. I think Washington's going to end up locking up Metcalf a little bit. So it's going to leave guys like Tyler Lockett and David Moore open. So we're going to go with Alvin Kamara. The flex, old man Gurley and his uh, knees. Uh, Chase Edmonds, who I think he might end up being out. I am not quite too sure. He was questionable as of yesterday. So who are we going to end up going with? And then we got T. Higgins from Bengals. Uh, you know, is he basically going to be getting that target share now out there? You know, between, uh, what is it, A.J. Green, Tyler Boyd, and uh, him. So my gut and my feeling is actually they're going to really is going to sneak in a TD right here. I don't think T. Higgins gets one in it. Already in the flex. Uh, we got Antonio Brown. We got Hawkinson. We got Hines. And we got Kiki. Uh, Indy. I mean, are they going to allow this type of shootout? So considering that Indy last week they played... Uh, who did they play? Uh, oh my gosh, I'm quite forgetting this one. I think they played... Um, Indy played Tennessee, I think. So let's just see. Alrighty, so there we go. Now we got that squared away. Alrighty, I just got a notification. Let me look at that. So, <laughs> do, 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 do. we're looking, looking through. Oh no, Tennessee played Jacksonville. Indy played. Oh, Indy played Houston, and they were able to lock up. No. That was a couple of weeks ago. Alrighty. So, anywho, uh, who do I trust on this team? Uh, I can look back on this league and that will tell me exactly who is who and who played who. My mind is just wandering in all over the place. I have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, that's it. Uh, they played Chicago. That's it. Chicago. And he barely made a dent on there. So, uh, Deshaun, he's not going to have Duke Johnson as bailout this week. So, we're looking at, you know, the. Believe it or not, in this case, we're going to go with the tight end there. I think the tight end actually kind of prevails right there. Alrighty, special teams defense. We got Washington football team in Seattle and the Seahawks. Uh, it's definitely going to be Seattle in this one. Alrighty, we got Bears and we got the Vikings. I don't trust uh, Mitchell Trubisky. The Vikings are on one right here, uh, especially knowing like, hey, we're going to get it to Dalvin Cook and they got Justin Jefferson, I think. I think the Bears are gonna. I think I think this is gonna all come down to Mitch Trubisky, and Trubisky's just gonna turn the ball over. So there we go. And Russell Wilson, how many is gonna have yards? Is he gonna have at Washington? I'm playing against Russell Wilson. I think twice this weekend, or I played him last week twice. Either way, I just have back-to-back -back weeks of just facing Russell Wilson again. Uh, I mean, this guy is just the number one, number two quarterback in the NFL. I mean, you can you can debate as to who's the better QB. Uh, between uh, Patrick Mahomes and between uh, Russell Wilson. So, I mean, he's going to get at least 300 yards tonight. So we're probably going to say he's going to get about 360. Uh, we're going to go with 360 against uh, Washington just because I think he is going to be over that threshold right there. And all righty. So now we are going to go into my teams. Give me one second. There is a little bit of an update right here. That I'm focusing on. Uh, yes, that's what we need. There we go. And alrighty. All 
Okay, so I finally accomplished that. We can get rid of that. I can give you my attention now. I kind of feel like I am when I'm in my classroom. Okay, all right, so let's head on over and let's look at what I got going on with my own fantasy team. All right, this is my first fantasy team. I have been playing in this one for almost about 20 years now. So uh, this is our keeper league. Uh, out of all these other leagues, the bottom four uh, leagues, uh, this is the only league that's not a playoff one. This is a rotisserie league where the most points at the end of the season is going to win. So we play all the way to week 17. So looking at what we got over here in this league, let's just give a quick look at what's going on. Alrighty. So looking at what we got, these are the week 15 matchups and the current league standings. I am currently in fourth, so what we end up doing is we just have a regular schedule all the way to week 16 and then in the, uh, the final week, uh, our commissioner redo, redo, redoes the schedule to where number one plays number two, number three plays number four, et cetera, et cetera. And whoever has the most wins, uh, and then if there's a tie with the most wins, uh, the most points uh, gets it. So. Currently, I am a win behind uh, the field and about 80 points behind with three weeks to go. So basically, I need to let Russ cook to lose twice. I need to basically continue to win out and make sure that I hate uh, football uh, wins twice or that I can somehow leap them with about 80 points to go, uh, 80 points behind them. So which there might be a good chance if we are currently looking at my team. So let's go ahead and let's look at this matchup right now. Alrighty, so I'm playing against my friend Matt right here, and as you can see, I made the be better decision to actually start uh, in this one. I made the better decision to start, uh, what should we call it, uh, Justin Herbert, who last week did not do so well. Uh, I started Jared Allen. This league, we do, uh, instead of every 25 yards for a... Uh, uh, for a point, you get uh, every 20 yards you get a point, and passing TDs are worth six. However, though, fumbles and interceptions are minus three. So this is our lineup. We generally are a lower scoring league because we only got two wide receiver spots, um, and we have one running back spot and one flex. That's just because of the fact that hey, pickings on running backs are pretty slim. So. Once you get that third running back in a flex league, it's like you're kind of guaranteed to dominate. So this is why we decided to go this route as far as like, hey, we're gonna make it harder for you to pick that flex position. So you're gonna most likely put in a running back. We benefit running backs more in our league because wide receivers only get 15 yards a point. Uh, running backs get 10. So this is our version of a little bit of a pro league and uh, kickers. Uh, there are no kickers in this league, <laughs> so which is what I kind of like. Uh, but because just because the kicker is just kind of a coin toss, and basically, if you got the if you got the gold mine in what's his name, uh, the Atlanta kicker, uh, uh, you're pretty much going to be yeah there. Alrighty, so we just don't need that. We're gonna get rid of that. Let's see, how do we get rid of this one? I don't want that message in here. Come on. second I need to figure out how to get rid of uh, messages because that's kind of lame that I don't want to see just some random people uh, going in there all right give me one second oh I got Bowden or Jeff Wilson all right so we'll take care of that part later on okay so let me just chatter here that is a great question. Oh, thanks for stopping in. Uh, let's see, Jars. Hey, were you with? Uh, were you here last week? I'm trying to see if I remember that name. Okay, so we got Bowden uh, over in uh, Miami, and we also got uh, what you call. We got Jeff Wilson, which now we know that Mostert is going to be coming back over here and you know what's gonna end up happening with my the Miami situation uh, off the top of my head it would normally be like ah oh, you know it's just a timeshare and uh, with Mostert coming in uh, with Bowden and the tough situation that Bowden is uh, playing uh, whatchamacallit uh, Kansas City 
So, I mean, are they going to be able to run the ball enough? You know, is he a good enough pass catcher where they're going to basically allow him to uh, still stay in there and uh, get him that way? Uh, oh, split decision off the top of my head. They got rid of. You know, maybe earlier on he may just sneak one. He may just end up sneaking one in there. I wow, I was totally ready to go with uh, Jeff Wilson on this one, and then Bowden just somehow just ends up getting a little bit more of a sneaky and sneaky play on this end. Um, especially since what's his name Ahmed. Wait a minute. Oh, I'm thinking of Ahmed. That's right. He's on the Pats. Thank you. Okay, now now I need to get my mind going. <laughs> Mod Mike hit all the carries. That's right. Okay. Alrighty. There we go. Uh, bowed in for the Pats. So we still got we still got a healthy James White. We still got Sony Michelle working in there. Um, bowed in. Why? Uh, my mind's not working. I had a hard time waking up this morning, and this was just kind of one of those weird ass like crap shoots for the day where you're just sitting there going like oh what's going on so <laughs> oh, yeah my mind is just kind of basically just failing me i really just am uh first of all let me get what is your uh league settings um what's your end up uh league settings yes mods on the dolphins they are playing the kc bowden he is out and plays the Pats, not KC. What? Wait, are you talking about Lynn Bowden? The wide receiver running back for the Dolphins? Yeah. Because that's the only Bowden that, that I currently see. So if I go into my little fantasy tools, this is why I am perplexed with this. So, all right, so we got half PPR. That's good. Okay, I, know I play in a two leagues that are half PPR. Yes, Ahmed's on the Dolphins. He's starting running back. Uh, Bowden. Bowden. So, if I'm looking at all the Pats wide receivers real quickly, so let me just go over here, do my little Yahoo search. What platform are you playing on as well, too? That would be a little bit helpful, because if I type in Bowden, that's why this name uh, reminded me of this. So, I mean, the only one that I got is I got the Miami uh, wide receiver. Oh my gosh, how did I not know that Casey is... <sighs> wow, I am just so off. Half PPR, Yahoo, okay. Alrighty, so there we go. <laughs> my apologies, this is probably like the worst Sunday. I'm coming off of a 60 hour work week in which uh, yesterday was not supposed to be and you also have Curly as well too. Alrighty, so you're looking for this in your running back slot or you're looking for this in your uh, flex spot. I think that, that that's what I'm wondering off the off the top end. There we go. Okay. How do I not remember that? There we go. Now I can remember that Kansas City is playing New Orleans. Oh my gosh, they're playing New England. Okay. So basically, Ahmed, will he get the carries? Apologies for the brain fart. Normally, I am pretty on this. Uh, <laughs> and it's going into the semifinals as well for me, too. Alrighty, so you also have Gurley 2 if we're going half PPR, RB2 already starting, McKissick, alrighty, so there we go. Alright, so you got McKissick, now that we know for sure that uh, Antonio Gibson is out, uh, now we go basically, we go back to the original question, which is, uh, Bowden or Jeff Wilson in that spot. I'm going to go with Jeff Wilson just because of the fact that I think Ahmed's going to get the carries, like you're saying. Uh, that split, we don't know exactly. I mean, they were talking about most or was going to be shut down. Um, and in that spot, whatchamacallit, Bowden is playing wide receiver. Devontae Parker is out. I have him in one league. So the question is, will Tua be getting it over to him? Or uh, mind you that they are trying to get Jaseki in. So I don't know if Jaseki is. Let's take a quick look at Jaseki if he's in. Let me, before I give you my final opinion, right? Jeff Wilson, exactly. We're thinking that he might vulture. Oh, Jaseki is now is inactive. All right, so now that changes things. So who do we end up going with? Usually I also like to check and see what the depth chart of the Dolphins are. So let's just quickly check that depth chart. 
Uh, as the last thing before I make that final decision. So if we're looking at our wide receiver, we have Devontae Parker, who is out. Uh, however, though, at that running back spot. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think we're I think we're going to go for the goal line carry. I think this is essentially what you're looking for. Yep, as well, too. So, uh, but mind you also, too, uh, Tua is a rookie as well. Uh, and New England already played against one rookie quarterback and made them look ridiculous. This might be the opportunity where to, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, yes, Jakeem is out. <laughs> Everybody is out as well, too. But however, though, th they're also playing against Belichick. And now that I got this reminded of, he made, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Justin Herbert look ridiculous. He had his worst performance this year. Somehow, Belichick always throws things, uh, in a rookie quarterback, so that's going to affect... I think uh, what you might call it as well too. So I'm going with uh, the goal line carries on that one. Alrighty, final answer. We got it there. All right, baby, we made it there. Here we go. Alrighty. So good luck to you. I hope that it is out. Uh, are you in your uh, playoffs as well, or are you in the uh, consolation back bracket, Jers? All right, so let's get back to my team, looking at my matchup. Uh, right now, I have a good chance at hanging out and making it in there. Uh, so realistically, I am going to most likely pull out the wins if we look at this matchup right now. Um, <laughs> I mean, he's got Drew Brees against Kansas City, in which uh, I'm kind of thankful that Drew Brees is coming back because I think Drew Brees is going to have a bad game against Kansas City. I just have that feeling. Uh, he's got Mostert in his lineup, but I also think this is going to be a uh, 50-50 uh, uh, split right there between the two. Alrighty, let's go on to my other league. Alrighty, my El Cunado, in which this is the semifinals. Alrighty, so real quickly in the championship bracket, uh, I got. I'm, luckily, I'm not playing against the number one seed. Uh, playing against the number three seed hyperdrive already beat me a couple weeks ago So this is kind of a little bit of a revenge game. Let's just make sure that I have my maximum and uh, lineup that's in there So uh, I already had two of my quarterbacks playing. This is a two quarterback three right receiver uh, And a two running back uh, flex league. So on this one uh, we also get bonuses for every hundred yards that they rush or receive or 300 yards for every uh, receiving um, uh, for receiving yards. So I didn't get any of those bonuses with Aaron Rodgers yesterday, even though he had uh, two TDs. Passing TDs are worth four points in this league. So looking back, the decision that I have to make, I mean, Hopkins is always a no-brainer. You're locking him in each week no matter what. So the only ones that I had left were title lock at Corey Davis. I had a feeling Devontae Parker was going to be out. I don't trust DJ Shark yet with uh, DJ Shark, DJ Shark yet with uh, Garden Minshew, which is the carousel over there. But you can always be confident and start James Robinson. That guy is going to get 20 touches and he's going to get 80 yards every game. That is his floor. I mean, that's all that you can basically ask for in a rookie running back. I mean, that's the most you can ask for. So Robinson is your lock and load. Like you're just always starting him each week because. He's gonna get you 20. <laughs> he's gonna get you 20 touches, 80 yards, and his maximum ceiling is about 25 touches, 120 yard, 25 yards, and a and a touchdown. So, I mean, it's still solid to where you're gonna rock between uh, eight and 18 points with him. So, you just need that stability on that team, and then hopefully have guys that bang it out of the park like Aaron Jones on your team. But uh, Corey Davis, which he had a crappy week last week, if we're gonna look at. How he ended up doing last week all right Corey Davis I didn't start him last week in this league I started him in my keeper league Corey Davis had a future 34 yards and a, uh, and a fumble loss so we don't need to worry about him uh, this week this is gonna be a bounce back week for him against uh, what you might call it uh, Tennessee is playing uh, Detroit in which they are a swish Swish, swish, t oh my gosh, I can't even say words today. This is pretty much how my Sunday is going. You wake up late, right? You're not feeling good. 
dizzy off of a 60 hour <laughs> work week and then it's just it's probably the worst week to have a 60 hour work week especially heading into the semifinals. so we are continuing we are going to ride the bounce pack of Corey davis because at some point detroit is going to have to pick in hey who are they going to lock into are they going to lock into hunter henry or are they gonna, i mean not hunter henry derrick henry and try to stop him or are they going to try to stop uh, aj brown so i got a feeling that Corey davis uh, gets a bounce back uh, this week uh, Evan Ingram I mean it's basically Colt McCoy is thrown to this guy I may sub him out just because I just don't know what it's going to be like with Colt McCoy and Evan Ingram there and he's coming into this game questionable normally questionable tags are all right uh, but the bane of this league since we have no IR slots is that I've had to hang on to Christian McCaffrey all season in which every week he comes back Hey, he throws up 30 points and then he teases you like, I'm going to be back this week, I'm going to be back this week, and he's out. So just depending on what's going to end up happening, I may end up dropping him just because of the fact that this carousel is just too much. And if I squeak out this win in which I am currently projected uh, to win this out right now, uh, that uh, all goes to well. But I am playing against Russell Wilson and Ryan Tannehill which I think Ryan Tannehill is going to have a monster game. So this guy is going to benefit from DK Metcalf and AJ Brown, which is kind of scary. So I am hoping that this actually just doesn't happen. Um, and of course, this guy is starting Chubb and Wilson, and this is a five-person league, so rest assured that, hey, this person had in their lineup and they finished third. Uh, let's look at their other running backs. Wow, his lineup is depleted, and he's still... Uh, has a chance to hang in there with me uh, if these guys go off. Alrighty, so there is that. Let's go back to, oh hey, why would I not do this? All right, let's go back to the overview on this one. So we got that team all squared away. Hey, I don't need that one, come on. And let's go in and check in the iron. Pass the ball out this game. And who better do it against the Falcons? I think this is, this is a, this is a game where I think he will, uh, he'll get a, I, why are you talking, Yahoo? I don't need you to talk right now. Come on. I hate when that happens with nods. For some reason, I thought I was getting hacked for one second. Like, oh, what's happening over here? Alrighty. So here we go. <laughs> Man, this Sunday is just not going. Anyone remember that commercial? Uh, what was it with the uh, the Hyundai uh, Tucson? Uh, not the Hyundai Tucson. One of the Hyundai cars, and the guy's like, hey, the in-laws are coming over, and they want to take your boat. It's like, oh, this Sunday? And... Uh, yeah, so then uh, the guy runs, uh, gets in his car, drives out to the dock, just takes his boat out and just sets it out to sea and goes, not my Sunday. It basically just feels a long way basically just to basically say that this Sunday just does not feel like my Sunday. Second week into doing this, I feel like I'm doing worse, but that's all right. Hey, it's about having fun and figuring this out because I believe that there is a wealth of knowledge uh, inside here right now and uh i gotta figure out how to get it out to you maybe i might shine as far as uh what you might call it um you know how to help you with drafting because eventually i do want to get into next season where like hey you know kind of do like a weekly thing where like hey on something on tuesday nights to help you with uh your waiver wire targets maybe that's something i could do this week and uh as well as setting your lineups on sunday which probably would be better maybe to do on saturday just to prep, I don't know. It just depends on what is up and out there. Alrighty, let's continue on this one. Alrighty, this week I'm playing against Russell Wilson again in Every Day I'm Wrestling. And then I have my father-in-law playing against my wife. I am Mr. McCastrick. She is Mrs. McGiblet. She is the number one team in our league. She is kicking everyone's ass. Uh, her only weakness is quarterback. That's it. Everyone else, she is strong. I mean, she's got fucking Dalvin Cook. Uh, she's got Devontae Adams, and her her team is just end up stacking. And oh, by the way, she also has DK Metcalf too. I taught my wife too well, and now my wife is just kicking everyone's ass in this league. Alrighty, so looking at who we got right now, it is a close one. I got Patrick Mahomes going against Russell Wilson. I think I have the advantage right there. Uh, second wide receiver. I had a bit of an interesting co uh, conundrum here. I drafted wide receivers very well on this one but uh looking at who i got this is going to be an awfully close one he's got nick chubb i got nick chubb in another league um so this is going to be an extremely tight and close race in which 
I think my opponent uh, is going to have the advantage on me. Uh, Stefan Diggs, if you didn't know, uh, if you were able to draft him late, he was one of the best kept secrets as far as like, how was a wide receiver coming over to a new team going to fare? That was the question with uh, Hopkins and Diggs. And guess what? That proved to be a good choice if you drafted either of them because they were value picks at where they were at. Uh, so I've already had Diggs and I had Aaron Jones go off. The only one that I didn't have go off was Austin Eckler. I decided to start him on uh, Thursday night, in which you are safe to usually start uh, running backs on Thursday night just because of the fact that that is the one position that uh, just require that where they can end up uh, bouncing back very well. Uh, I made the choice to be bench Keenan Allen. Uh, I drafted him in two leagues. I made the choice to bench him in this league just because of the fact that I had a plethora of healthy wide receivers and it was a last minute. He was active uh, on this one. So looking back, uh, you know, who should I pick? Should I put in uh, J.K. Dobbins or should I put in Eckler? On this one, I decided I was going to roll with Eckler just because his usage has been increasing. Uh, and of course, <laughs> I ended up drafting James Robinson in all five of my leagues. He was my target rookie, so I ended up going out with him there. Um, so the choice for this one basically became like, hey, am I going to pick Adam Thielen or am I going to pick Cooper Cup? And um, Cup does have the better matchup, but now that uh, Cousins is connecting with Thielen and uh, Justin Jefferson a lot more, and the fact that they are in Minnesota, they are in the Dome, uh, this is actually a little bit more helpful. It was, if it was an outdoor game, I wouldn't have taken it, but I'm going with Thielen on this one. So I got a Thielen. I got a feeling it's Thielen. Thielen, Thielen man. Hashtag Week 15 Semi Playoffs. Alrighty. I was kicked out of the playoffs on this one. So last week, oh, and by the way, I just want to look at my matchups for last week because I had something in my 20 years of fantasy football. This had never happened. So I'm just going to quickly look at the matchups. Uh, let's just go back to week 15. And I had a fucking tie. I tied last week. How is that shit happened? So if we end up looking at my record, so I'm just going to grab my team real quick, right? So I've been playing uh, Yahoo Fantasy Football for uh, almost 20 years now, since 03. So that's about what? This is 18. This is a year 18, technically. Um, in this entire time, okay, when I've been playing fantasy football, uh, I'm always trying to get to this elusive, like, let's get uh, over... Uh, 600 uh, winning percentage right that's where we're going but if you look at this there's that one that one tie and granted you're not going to get ties in the fraction point leagues so that's how you end up preventing ties which is kind of funny because in one league uh, that I was actually in there was a tie with the fraction of the points it was like it, it, it was that but since we do whole numbers in this league guess what we had a tie and I ended up experiencing a tie this was a uh, complete uh, BS because of the fact that every time I don't start Cooper Cup Cooper Cup always burns me so we can attribute to three losses that I have in the season because of my love hate of drafting of Cooper Cup all right so will I get burned again in this matchup so let me just look at the matchups in this league right now so currently uh, I'm favored just by a couple points but neither me nor my opponent have started anyone today. And the question is, what is this going to be? What do I do with this? Okay. So Ty Tyreek Hill, that's an automatic start. Cooper Cup, you are the bane of this team. You are the reason why I am out of the playoffs is because I can't trust you. And when I don't trust you, I don't start you. And then you screw me over by scoring more points on my bench. Uh, Cam Akers, uh, again, coming off of a solid 170 yards last week against New England so uh, we're keeping him in Hawkinson third rate is uh, third highest rated tight end this season in points so we are keeping him going if you were lucky enough to draft Travis Kelsey which you probably had to spend a second or third round pick on you could have gotten TJ Hawkinson in the later rounds and uh, somewhere around maybe 8 or 9 10 or 11 uh, and then you could have gotten Darren Waller in rounds 7, 8, and 9. So congratulations if you were patient and you waited to grab those tight ends there. You did good. 
I did that in two leagues and that has been very helpful and beneficial to me. Alrighty, uh, so was the decision that I made yesterday, which was basically like, hey, you know what? Uh, if we're going back to the Chappelle show, right, where they talk about diversifying your bonds, right? You know, diversifying your team, that's just the way to go. Uh, just in case to make sure that, hey, you're not all in on one player. With the exception of me, like James Robinson, that has worked out. But you can work that out when that's like a, uh, a spot when you're drafting. Like towards the end of the draft, you can go all in on one player. You just don't want to go all in on one player like too early before like maybe the first like seven, eight rounds. Like that type of thing. However, though, I ended up with Kyler Murray and Josh Allen just because I wasn't sure uh, picking in this 12-man league. Uh, how and it was just a pain trying to trade either one even though they were top five uh, You know, they were top five QBs all season Basically, nobody wanted to give up a running back one or a wide receiver one for any of these in which I was offering pretty pretty decent compensation packages for them as well packaging uh, the packaging of the Rams running back, etc, etc so, uh, Kyler Murray against Philly. Now that Jalen Hurts is actually doing things for Philadelphia, this may actually help keep Kyler Murray on the field. So, we are going to roll with Kyler Murray this week. Alrighty. And then, let's go off into the final league. Uh, wait, am I just going backwards and all over the map? I went da 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 Yeah, I mean, this is just the way this Sunday is going. Alright. And finally... Uh, as always, I like to always get into like one beat em up league where I'm basically just kind of playing against uh, the Yahoo public. However, though, the important thing is to why I always want to participate in one of these. Uh, I am in the finals first in this league. I mean, I mean, if you're if you're anything like a competent fantasy football manager, uh, you always, I think, want to be in one of these leagues just to start the season because, hey, you want to kind of see where the official draft trendings are. Um, for me, I work in data and statistics as far as like behavior with students. And so one of those things that, hey, you always want as much data as you can possible. So when you see somebody get a pickup in this league and you're like, hmm, you know, you can take that for what it is and say, should I apply it to this other league? So as many data points as I can to help me out in all of my leagues, that's where I just kind of just bring it all together. And here we go. Alrighty, so I am just favored again by five points. I am lucky that Devontae Adams had a crap game. Uh, he was 12 points under, but which that ends up uh, <laughs> evening out because guess what? Keenan Allen was the same on my end as well too. So we kind of had an even swap on uh, bad, uh, bad starts, although Devontae Adams is never a bad start. But the worst week you have, and you could hear my wife, she was cussing at the TV last night, basically saying, come on, Devontae Adams. Like, she's still in that uh, mindset as far as the Devontae Adams should get a touchdown every time he touches the ball. And I appreciate her competitiveness because she drafted well. She uh, she schooled all of us when she went back-to-back -back with Devontae and uh, what you would call it, and Dalvin Cook at the turn at the end of the draft, and she just just ended up stacking her team with uh, great wide receivers and running backs so and alrighty so what do I have to do well we are always starting James Robinson uh, we need to move Kareem Hunt back down into the flex spot because uh, whenever you have your flex player you're always moving into the evening game just in case something ends up happening and if you're locked and loaded on a player in the 10 a.m. spot, uh, you always want to have your flex spot just later, just to provide some extra uh, flexibility, so to speak, in case of things just don't work out. Uh, Kareem Hunt, the reason, the only reason I lost last week was not starting Kareem Hunt. I think I started Wayne Gallman instead of Kareem Hunt just because, like, uh, Nick Chubb is going off. But you got to remember, in Cleveland, this is basically either one of these guys. These guys are both low-end RB ones. So that's where we you got to evaluate both of them. Kareem Hunt, he's going to get his work. He's going to get the goal line work along with uh, Chubb. But you're always going to see Kareem Hunt in the two-minute drill uh, as well as you're always going to see Kareem Hunt on third downs unless if it's third and one. Um, but you're always going to see Kareem Hunt in the game. So this is a great one-two punch. I mean, Cleveland was able to basically figure out that, hey, we have two running backs that can legitimately be starters. And if we do this, essentially... 
you know, as much as this hurts the running back position, this is actually how you should run your football teams in real life. You should run them this exact same way. Um, yes, Zeke is actually, uh, if we're looking at that, he is out. This just happened within the last 10 to 15 minutes because I just noticed that Zeke was out as well too once you said that. Uh, and it's the fact that I never thought in my mind uh, as I opened this show, um, I got to decide Heinz, I'm in or Bowden. Heinz is now taking a back seat um, uh, on here. So uh, going back to with what I was saying about uh, Zeke Elliott, uh, last week was the first time that I sat there. Uh, he's inactive against the 49ers. Yep, so that is officially confirmed. Uh, in which I'm luckily I don't have to make that decision uh, right now with uh, what you call it with Zeke. I mean, it, you know, this is a problem. You know, I, I this goes to a coaching problem as far as like when Dak was out, the easy answer should have been we're going to rely on Zeke and you know shift that from 55 uh, 55 percentage of uh, 55 percent plays of passing down to 45 uh, percent um, of running plays. You know, you thought you would see the 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 trend switch and they try to do that but they didn't adjust their playbook at all uh to accommodate ezekiel Elliott. so this is also th this is this is a failure on three folds uh for the cowboys one um whatchamacallit mike mccarthy we we are learning uh from anonymous players that hey you know they don't do uh in-game coaching and they don't do coaching you know aside you know coaching their skill players up so we're seeing a failure on that level too. We're seeing a failure on the offensive line, which this Cowboys line was touted as the best offensive line. And three, uh, running backs have the shortest window out of all players. So we are starting to see the decline of Ezekiel Elliott. So I'm not trusting him with a first round pick next year. This is in two, three leagues. I had the opportunity, I think, to take Zeke. And I only took him in one just because of the fact that, hey, I felt a little bit more safer taking him in a Yahoo Public League rather than the other leagues. I thought I would give him a chance. Uh, so going back to your question, uh, Hines. Hines is having a decline because of the fact that now it's the more of the emergence of Jonathan Taylor. Uh, Ahmed or Bowden. I'm still going Ahmed over, over Bowden. That's my choice. Uh, Hines, you know, could he be out of the... Could he be out of the doghouse a little bit this week? Um, I think realistically, I think I'm going to rock Ahmed on this one. Just because I think uh, two is going to end up being locked up by uh, New England's defense. So we're going to see a little bit more of uh, uh, carries and Ahmed uh, involved in the pass game. So uh, I actually just dropped Hines out of one of my leagues. Uh, just because of I'm starting to see the decline. Hines was the bane for me in, in one of my leagues, and that leagues where I'm out of the playoffs. What ended up happening was the fact that, hey, I picked him up as soon as uh, whatchamacallit went down. When Marlon Mack went down, I was like, yeah, it's basically going to be a timeshare. I think Hines is going to win it out over this rookie Jonathan Taylor. And, you know, did underperform for the next couple weeks. So then I ended up dropping him, and then he blew up, and then Jonathan Taylor was took a back seat and now we're seeing the emergence of Jonathan Taylor again. This is basically what, what's happening in, uh, what's happening with the, the Rams as well too, right? Uh, these were, these two rookie running backs, uh, took back seats early while these backup running backs were able to step up. And now that they have unleashed them, uh, yeah, that's exactly what ended up happening. You have Taylor as well too. Which Taylor? Uh, Tyrod Taylor. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of which Taylor. Oh, Jonathan Taylor. Uh, uh, that's the one. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I would ride Jonathan Taylor with, with absolute confidence right now just because uh, Indianapolis, which Indianapolis is the surprise in that division. Uh, no surprise that Tennessee is doing uh, well as they are uh, in, in that division as well too, but Honestly, I mean, you figure that, hey, them trading for Phillip Rivers, who is at the twilight of his career, um, you know, and they still have a chance to win out that division. So, yeah, so I would ride him with confidence. We are always riding James Robinson just because of the fact that, yep, 20 carries, 80 yards is the absolute floor with this guy. So, I mean, you can't, you can't get better than, than a floor of eight points at least. 
uh, with, with, with the starting running back. So, I mean, that, that's a solid RB2 uh, right there, as well as Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt and Robinson are just the two sol solid. Yeah, exactly. Jonathan Taylor played the Texans and went off. That, that Texans defense is terrible. And the fact that um, their wide receiver core is just so depleted there, along with now Duke Johnson is now going to be with the Texans. So my wife is uh, basically, she's made the choice. Uh, hopefully she made a smart choice at starting, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Ryan Tannehill over Deshaun Watson because uh, those are the two quarterbacks that were in her league. So I would definitely trust Ryan Tannehill over Deshaun Watson 100% this week uh, because I've got a feeling that it's just going to, uh, Tannehill is going to go off and then they're going to have Derrick Henry to clean up as of late but I don't want that to happen because I'm going to get kicked out <laughs> of two of my leagues uh, uh, my playoff chances will end if that ends up happening alrighty so now that we've wrapped up my lineup decisions uh, my tight end decisions on this league uh, this morning I think I dropped uh, Logan. I dropped uh, Evan Ingram for Logan Thomas I have Evan Ingram in one uh, other league so I just kind of wanted to uh, get that going uh, just to spread out because uh, I made bad tight, tight end decisions in two leagues. Uh, for some reason, I ended up dropping uh, Hunter Henry uh, while I had to make a decision to basically be to keep Hunter Henry or Christian McCaffrey and just have him sit there and stay there. And I dropped Hunter Henry and that's when my point declined, my overall total points. I was losing about 10 points a week in my PPR league because of that. So. Uh, going with Logan Thomas, uh, streaming that in three of uh, three of my leagues, as well as I uh, got Eric Ebron and uh, Evan Ingram in another league, and then luckily I have the plug and play in, um, or just the start and play with uh, Waller and Hawkinson in two of my leagues. But that about wraps up this fantasy football Sunday. It is 9:20 here on the AM on the West Coast. I am here in Los Angeles. I need to get some breakfast. I just want to thank you once again for tuning in uh, as I'm uh, going through this experience as I try to get myself back to platinum uh, this was a little bit of the frustrating thing is that I am at always the goal is to finish in Yahoo at diamond I'm currently back at platinum because I had shitty play last week and uh, I decided to uh, have a tie in one of my leagues so that that definitely hurt me out so when you play in multiple leagues and you take more than uh, one loss your rating always drops big time. So that's the risk and reward with playing in multiple leagues. But, you know, that's just the personal goal of mine. You know, you always have to have like an objective besides winning and trying to get the championship right. You're looking at an overall picture. So thank you once again. I will see you next week. And let's figure out who we can raid right now. All right, so do I have anybody that I can raid? There is nobody that I can raid right now because maybe I'm not following enough channels. But thank you once again, and I will see you next week, maybe possibly Tuesday night if I can get a little uh, waiver wire special. We'll see. All right, take care. Thank you.